friends, my name is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. Currently on Instagram, I am doing a giveaway for one of my digital portraits and a lot of you have asked me to show you exactly how I create my portraits. So here it is. I'm definitely not an expert and I have a lot to learn and there are tons of different styles and ways to do things but I'm going to show you how I've been doing them and what tips and tricks I've learned in the short time that I've been creating them. Okay so to get started I am using my iPad, the Apple Pencil, the first generation and an app called Procreate. Procreate is about $10 and in my opinion is absolutely worth it. Today I will be showing you how I create a portrait and using my beautiful friend's photo who gave me permission and asked me to make her famous. <laughs> when you open up the app you will be able to add your own photo you want and you can also use the different dimensions over here to pick the size that you want. I already have my photo ready so I'm going to click on that. Now the key is layers, layers, layers. Up here you will find the spot where you are able to add different layers. And I start from the bottom layer and work my way up. So I'll start with her face and then later on I will add the hair that will overlap the face. And with the layers you are able to move them. So if I have two layers here and I need this layer over that layer, I am able to drag it above. So that is a good thing to know. Now when I get started, I first have to start with that layer. You need to make sure that you do not start on that first layer. You need to add a layer over that first layer. And I use the inking. I go to inking and then I go to technical pen and I start at the brush size 1% and then the opacity needs to be at 100% because I'm going around her face and when I add the color into it, I don't want it to go over like this. So I need to have it at 100% and then I just start with finding a color that I like on her face and I start tracing around her face and when you hold it, it makes it more straight. So I just kind of circle around her face. And it's also okay if this is not perfect because it is my first layer and I'm not really concerned with it because I'm gonna have the hair over it. And if I do need to go back, I have those layers where I can fix it easily. And then I'll also do her neck. I always hold it for a second and let it straighten out. And I even go over a little bit just so that when I start adding her shirt, I know it will go over it instead of having a space in between. So when I am done tracing around it, I add the color and I can drag it and put it into it. So that is her face. And then I turn off that layer and then I add a new layer. The third layer is going to be her shirt. And I like to kind of play with the little details in my photos. So the larger part of her shirt will be one yellow and then up here I will have it a different shade of yellow. So first I will find a shade that I want the collar to be and I will just start on that. Now when you are connecting the sides you need to make sure that it's fully connected because if you don't it will end up going to the whole screen. So you definitely have to make sure that each end connects. And then I'm just going to find another yellow that I like, maybe a little bit brighter. See right there, I have to make sure it connects and then go to the other side and do the same. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you have the layers, so that right there is gonna be covered with the hair, so I'm not too particular on that. Oops, make sure it goes to the right side. And then I am going to take my layer, I'm going to hide that layer, add a new layer, and then pick what I'm going to use next. I'm not going to add in the seat belt. I like it without, and so does Miriam, so it no longer has a seat belt in my photo. 
For this layer, I think I am going to start with her eyes. I don't do the complete eyes. I just kind of do the shape of the eye and I just really like how it looks. And so that's just how I do it. You can do it any way that you want, but this is just how I do it. And sometimes I'll make it a little bit bigger, but there is no set way that I do this. I just play around a lot. I am still new at this, so I am still figuring things out. So I'll just bring it up really close. Make sure it's on pencil, let it shape out. And then I do a second one right below it to make it a little bit thicker. Bring it up, fill it in, and then I fill in the little spots if there are any. And then you can bring it out a little bit, I do. And the cool thing about this is I like that it is a layer in its own because then I can come up here and I will go to copy and then I will click it again and paste it and then I can bring it over here and then I flip it and I'm able to move it right where it is and it's the same exact size and everything. So that's a cool little trick that I learned recently. And then I leave it and then I also like to kind of see what it looks like. Looks good to me. So I will leave that and then I'll hide that one again. Then I will add in a new layer and this layer I will do her glasses. You can either find a shade here or you can just use the wheel and find what you want. You can change the color completely if you want, but I try to just use what we have on the photo unless um, the person asks me to change the color. So I just continue and I, again, I'm not perfect with it. I just make sure everything is connected. So I will just, again, just keep tracing around, make sure the opacity is 100% and then just keep going around. And also what you can do, if you can't see like this area, you can take the first layer and you can make the opacity very light. So then you can see what you're doing. So that's another little trick. And then you make sure you're still on that layer that you're working on. Then you bring the opacity back up on that first layer and then I'm still on the sixth layer and I'll add a little bit of the detail. And then again, I will just take that color and bring it in and there's her glasses. So then if I want to take a look, see how it's looking, I will add it and see. And then I see here that I didn't get that color so I will bring it right on it. Anywhere that you didn't get, you can fix or you can also drag it in. All right, looks good to me, so I will continue. I will hide that one, hide these ones, and now I will add a new layer. The next layer I will do, I think I will do her mouth. So I will find the pearly white and just bring it really close and start outlining her teeth. And 
Once I have the teeth, I will start with her. Oh, I like this one. Once I have her teeth, I will start with her lips and I can see that there is two different colors. So I do tend to use those colors and play a little bit because I like those small little details. So I'll start with the top, outline her mouth. And then I bring it here and here. That's all I have to do to get the top lip. And then also I'll find a color in here and sometimes I'll just add it there and here because later I'll come in with the uh, airbrushing and then I can just grab it and there's a little bit of color there. So I'll do the bottom and bring it all around, let it shape out. And I also like to use this little shadow over here as well in my little details. So I will bring it to her teeth and drag it down. Same on this side. And then I will also make sure that it's all the way across. And then I will do that little lip thing. Bring it here, find my color, and there you go. So that's what I have for her lips now. And then I will go in and add another layer on top of it and this will be my airbrushing. I like to use airbrushing and I use the airbrush, I use the soft and then I play around a lot with this one. So the opacity, sometimes I'll have it really low and then sometimes I'll have it higher. It just depends on what look I'm going for as well with the brush size. So with her lip, I like it be a little bit smaller and then I just go over it with the color that I want and then I go around it so it's less intense so it's just a small detail that I like to do I don't know if it makes a difference to others but it definitely I can see the difference so then I start with this side and this side and like I said you play around with it so the the size on the bottom I felt was was good but then on top I need it a little bit smaller so I bring it over it then I add the other color to soften it a little bit I'm sure there's a million ways to do this but this is just how I use mine and then I also take the color here and soften it into that little shadow on the side of their mouth and the top. And I do the same over here, just a little bit and a little bit. And that's her mouth. And if I need to make adjustments later, I have those layers, so it's an easy fix if I see something towards the end that I don't like. And then I will add another layer. I will hide those layers and this layer. The next layer I will do is her face features, and I like to make it so that there is a differentiation with the base color of her skin and then the little shadows. So I'll find a little bit of darkness and I'll pick my color. Oh, and I have to make sure that I am on inking again. And then I go to technical and I make sure it's all where I like it. I'm on my layer nine. And then I start with those small shadows and lines. So when I go to my first layer, I can see that there's a difference between those two colors. And so that's perfect for me. And then I'll just hide that again and continue. I like to use the nose color. If I don't like how long it is, I'll erase a little bit. And then I will also go over here, add those little Q 
cute details to her face. And I like a little less curve. Then I will go to the first layer and see what I think. See, I don't like how that is, so I will go back and erase it and then fix it. And I just like to check here and there to see how it's coming along. I'll put all the layers on and see what I'm working with so far. Very cute, love her. So then I'll just close all those out again and then add a new layer. So now I will do her hair. So I can either find a color in it or I know it's black so I can come over here and just, sometimes it's a blue tone and I don't want her to have blue hair so I'll just manually just turn it black. Then I will start by making her curls. So now the hair is done and if you want to add some curls off to the side you can. I can go like this, make it nice and cute, shape it and then add more to it if I like. Oops, right into that. But I think I like it how it was so I'm going to delete those and then I am going to do, oh I need to do her eyebrows. So I will create a new layer, turn this one off and start with the first eyebrow. Again, I'm gonna use black, I'm gonna use the technical pen, so I'm gonna close that out, and I'm just gonna start shaping it. Start with my top layer, and then I'll add in the lower layer. Make sure they're connected at the end, and then I don't, I don't connect it here, I connect it here and then I'll put it in and then I erase this and kind of add the little end pieces just carefully and I try to see what it looks like, play around with it. I know my girl loves her eyebrows so I don't want to mess up her eyebrows. And then I will look at the first layer and then I'll adjust whatever I need. I don't like this right here, so I'm gonna erase that. And then I do the same trick I do with the eyes. So I'll turn off this layer, and then I will copy, and then I will paste, bring it over here, flip it over, just as needed and just play with it a little bit. I think that is good. And then I will go and look. So far it's looking good. I don't have the mouth so that looked kind of funny but this is what it looks like. I don't know where her other eye is either. Oh, there it is. 
This is what it's looking like so far. And then I also like to add a little bit of blush and the airbrushing onto her neck. So I will start with that. Next, I will close all these. And so sometimes I'll use a color from her lip and then I'll go to airbrush. Same airbrush, I'll bring it down really low. I, I don't have a set opacity that I have for this. I just kind of play around and I'll bring it up a bit and then I will start. I'll stay on this layer and then I'll add that layer and just kind of see what it looks like. See how it's there. So if I don't like how it looks, I'll adjust again and then kind of bring it in. And then if it comes off the hair, I put this layer below the hair so it doesn't really matter, but you can go and just erase where it is. I don't know if you can see that it's erasing. It's erasing all the stuff that comes off of the face. But I'm not too concerned about that, so I'm gonna delete that. And then I will put this layer under the hair so it won't even be seen from the side. I'll make another layer and then I will also add a little bit of shadowing under her neck. So I'll turn off this layer and I will grab a color that's around her. So I'll kind of probably do that and then just bring it down a little bit and then add all the layers, see where it falls, if I like it or not. I don't like that, so I'm gonna delete it. I'll just delete the whole layer. I don't like how that looked. So generally I do have shadowing below, but if I like it at the end, I won't add shadowing to her neck. So we'll see what else I have to complete. And see here, you can tell that the layers don't touch. When I was saying that there were spaces and I don't like how there is a space, sometimes I will go below. I will find where I need to add a layer and I'll sometimes use a little trick and I will, if I need more skin, I'll put a layer behind the skin, grab that color and then kind of circle around it and just add it in there and you can't see it. But then you also have to go to the hair and fix that if there's any, Oops. make sure you're on the right pencil. And just fill it in if I need to. And also with down here, And over here, sometimes you just had to fill in little spots. I think that looks good. All right, here the hair is covering in a way it doesn't need to on the glasses, so I am going to just kind of erase a little bit from her glasses. So this is what it's looking like so far. I like how it looks. So I don't have a lot of adding that I would do. I do see that the, the blush is over the glasses. So I'm gonna go in and fix that and put the glasses probably just over under the um, hair. So then it's no longer covering it. So if I don't like how strong the blush looks, I can use the eraser and I can go in to different erasers. So I'll use the same brush I was using, which was the airbrushing for the blush, and then I will just kind of soften up the airbrush if it's too much. I don't know if you can see 
it's changing a little bit, lightening up, but not taking the whole thing away. And then when I'm done and I want the background, if I have a solid background, I go to layer one, I add a layer above the first layer, and then I go in and pick my color. I will pick an easy one and I will just go with this color. And that is it. And if I see I don't like right here, so I'll need to either go and find it on what layer that is there, or I can just go to the top layer and then I go and color it in and it's like it was never there. So those are some tricks that I use. This photo is more of a simple photo and I did wanna add in a couple tricks or tips that I do with my photos. So I will go to a photo that I did recently and it is this skirt. I did not do those dots individually and I just wanted to show you guys how I did that. So I did have a layer over the tops of the skirt to, to make those dots. So I will hide those dots and then I already have a layer ready and then I went to my brushes and I went to syrup and then from the spacing I put it at 100% so it makes these dots and then I go over to the side and I can adjust the size of those dots. So then I just start by adding the dots and you can just kind of play around and it brings it in. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, whatever you want and if you go over her arm, her arm and her purse are layers above this, so then you don't even see it. So if I come over here, I can easily delete it, but when I have these layers above it, you don't even see it at all. And that is just one little trick that helps me with the little details that I have in some of my photos, as well as, let's see, I will bring this back down. I don't use that all the time, but I think it's adorable and with hair. So with, let's see, I'll go, I'll go just go back. And I'll show you, there are different uh, brushes you can use. There's touch-ups, I like to use these a lot. So if she had a different color in her hair, I'll just make it a little bit lighter. And I just add in you see that, I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty light, but you can add it. So I will make it lighter so you can see. And that is just how I put in those details of the hair. Not so messy, I do make sure I go through it and I do it nice. And then it's a top layer, so I'll do the hair and then I'll have this over it. And then I'll come through and close them all out and be able to erase anything on the side that I didn't want. And that is just another trick of how I do hair. This is a mess, I would never present anyone with this, but that is just the brush that I use and I wanted to show you how I do that. And there's also stubble, and so like if a man has his beard, you can adjust it and add in a beard. Clearly she doesn't have a beard, but I'm just showing you. And there are cool things in here. There's elements, there are different shapes, there's uh, trees and stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun when you get into this. So I really like the tree and I will show you how they come on. So in the background, you can make trees, you can make them different sizes. It's a lot of fun. I love this app and I love creating them and it's just been a real nice pastime while we are awaiting this whole COVID thing out. That is all I have for this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those below. And if you are on Instagram, be sure to enter my digital portrait giveaway I am hosting until June 30th for my birthday. And if you wanna stick around, feel free to subscribe so you can follow our adventures abroad as we move to Thailand in a couple weeks and I vlog the whole journey. And I will see you in the next one.